Density meters are vital measurement instruments used in almost every industrial process. If material is flowing through a pipeline, it most likely needs to be measured in some way. The need for density measurement exists across multiple industries and applications. However, there's no one-size-fits-all solution. The variability of media type, flow rate, pipe size and other factors warrant the existence of several different types of density measurement solution. In this video, we'll detail the most prominent density meters available to help you determine which solution is appropriate for your process. Some of these instruments have been around for decades, whereas some are new and disruptive technologies. Each instrument tends to have its sweet spot for a specific application depending on the process, environment and budget. For each instrument, we'll break down how the technology works, its challenges and innovations. Let's get started. The nuclear density meter is an energy-based instrument known for its flexibility within processing applications. The clamp-on design of this unit and its operating principles allow it to be installed in a wide array of applications. These include most standard piping materials, as well as either horizontal or vertical piping configurations. Nuclear density meters function by emitting a measured amount of radiation from the source, through the pipe, and into the receiver. The difference between the radiation emitted from the source compared to the radiation accounted for at the receiver is then used to infer density. However, the pathway does not cover the entire pipe. This means some media will continue through the process without being measured. As the nuclear core degrades over time, the accuracy is affected. Once the nuclear core degrades to its half-life, it requires interventions such as additional and more frequent testing. In many cases, the user will choose to remove the instrument from service at this stage. Removal or disposal of the nuclear density meter has its own set of challenges, as strict protocols must be followed. In most cases, disposal is very expensive. The nuclear density meter also requires monitoring and maintenance from a trained and certified radiation safety officer. This is a costly and time-consuming process for the end user and is often a reason for choosing a different technology. Red meters are more accurately described as an industrial measurement system rather than solely a density meter. They take multiple direct measurements of the process media and use those measurements to calculate density. Often used as an alternative to nuclear density meters and slurries, the inline measurements technology is based around its patented flexible cartridge. The company's flagship instrument, the Red Meter Toro, also has the capacity to integrate a flow meter onto a single unit which provides mass flow. As materials flow through the pipe, the cartridge bends slightly under the weight of the media. A high-precision laser is used to detect the displacement in the deflection of the cartridge. Acting as a scale, the measurement of deflection is equated to a measurement of mass. In a fixed volume, the change in mass is equated to the change in density. A variety of additional sensors measure pressure, temperature, wear, and other variables. When combining these measurements, an operator can not only truly measure their process, but also accurately and efficiently make changes downstream and automate troubleshooting. One consideration is that the red meter must be installed horizontally. This is a limiting factor in applications that only have vertical pipework. One advantage of the red meter is that the entire volume of pipe is measured in real time, as opposed to a sample taken periodically. Available in a variety of diameters, a red meter can withstand highly abrasive slurries as well as high percent solids. The wear sensor on the cartridge allows for efficient process control by alerting when the cartridge needs replacing in advance. Ultrasonic density meters operate in a similar manner to nuclear density meters. Energy is emitted through the pipe into a receiver. The density can be inferred from changes in the energy levels accounted for at the receiver. They can also be placed vertically or horizontally, depending on the process needs. There are multiple brands of ultrasonic density meters on the market, including long-standing brands, as well as newcomers attempting to break into the market. The key difference between ultrasonic density meters and more commonly used nuclear density meters is that the energy being transmitted through the pipe is sound waves, not gamma rays. 
Another key difference is that ultrasonic density meters are placed in line and do not have the same capabilities of handling solid materials. They can withstand abrasive slurries. However, this instrument works best with lower density slurries and lower solid content slurries. A reasonably priced instrument, ultrasonic density meters perform best and are most cost-effective on smaller pipelines. Although fairly accurate, they have a few clear limitations. The ultrasonic density meter is highly influenced by fluctuating solids content and entrained gases. As such, it works best with homogeneous mixtures. Coriolis meters are well established within multiple industries. They measure mass flow from which density can be deduced mechanically. The methodology is underpinned by the Coriolis effect. This is an effect whereby a mass moving in a rotating system experiences a force acting perpendicular to the direction of motion and to the axis of rotation. Though accurate, the Coriolis design inherently changes the characteristics of the flow due to the design principle. Such a change in flow is something engineers might prefer to avoid. Additionally, the change in flow makes the instrumentation less than ideal for abrasive slurries. Due to the principle of operation, Coriolis meters require thin pipe walls, which are not conducive to abrasive slurries and do not hold up well over time. The separation of pipes can also lead to clogging and faster wear rates. The internal diameter for the pipes of a Coriolis meter become prohibitively expensive beyond 12 inches, making this design best suited for measuring homogeneous liquid media. The average size of meters in the field are half-inch units. Because of their prohibitive pricing for larger pipe diameters, many Coriolis applications are measuring a sample line. Although the methodology is highly accurate, in the real world it fails to give accurate measurements of a full volume of pipe. The first non-nuclear density meter ever developed was the microwave density meter. The energy-based instrument operates by measuring how much energy is lost on its way from the source through the diameter of pipe to the receiver. The density of the slurry can then be inferred from the measured quantity. Just like a microwave that heats food, a microwave density meter affects whatever materials flow through its currents. This limits the potential applications greatly by eliminating any process that involves temperature-sensitive materials or any other material whose chemistry would be altered by microwaves. A hindrance in measurement for this instrument is the low power nature of microwaves, a significant factor when considering high density or high solids content. These devices are also relatively expensive when considering other available options. The most affordable of all the density meters is the acoustic meter. It is a clamp-on mechanical metal plate that sits on top of the pipe. Inside is a canister that holds a metal hammer, which continuously taps the side of the pipe. Based on the resonant acoustics of the hammer, the meter can infer density. The acoustic meter is used in small diameter pipes that have limitations on materials of pipe liners. For instance, a rubber line pipe will diminish the acoustic sound of the hammer, therefore altering the measurements gathered. The acoustic meter is open slightly because part of it is connected to the pipe and the other part is completely separate from the pipe. Problems can occur if material gets in between the pipe and hammer, which is difficult to avoid in industrial environments. An induced force density meter can be compared to Coriolis style meters. It is a mechanical inline meter that functions by moving a flexible pipe up and down at a specific pace via an actuator. Based on the amount that movement changes from the set force, it can infer density. This is a process-altering mechanism by nature, which as previously mentioned, isn't always ideal. However, there are ways to calibrate for the process changes. Less is known about this type of technology as it is fairly new. It is the most expensive density measurement technology available on the market today. A tomography density meter works similarly to a flow meter. These meters function with electrical resistance tomography or mapping. In practice, a series of electrical sensors are dispersed around the pipe. As materials move through the sensors, the resistance will change. Using this change in electrical resistance, the meter can infer density. The challenge with this methodology is that characteristics of the media can impact electrical resistance. For example, some materials conduct electricity better than others. A great factor of the tomography density meter is its brilliant cross-section image display of what is flowing through the pipeline. However, a physical display does not always equate to accurate numerical measurements. 
These meters are also limited in that they require a slower moving slurry and therefore require measurement slowly. Though it is a pioneer for display density meters, it comes at a high cost and functions most accurately with low density materials. As you can see, density measurement solutions are as varied as the applications they serve. Each solution has its ideal use case depending on the process, environment and budget. Here at Red Meters, our ideal applications tend to be customers who are looking for an easy to use solution to measuring density and mass flow, especially on large diameters. Our customers also seek us out if their applications have entrained air or are too abrasive for ultrasonic or Coriolis meters. To find out if Red Meters is an appropriate solution for your application, book a demonstration via our website at redmeters.com demo.